Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Bridezilla. I'm sure most of us have a bad wedding story that we've gone to. And that's why today I've got the worst wedding and Bridezilla ever story. But before we begin, don't forget about Lost Genre AITA Daily, a channel dedicated exclusively to Am I the A-hole? This is a story that I curated from three different posts. So now let's get started. This is from user Quarantine Thoughts. A longtime friend, Josh, was an awesome guy dating an awesome girl. They break up due to her not wanting kids, but he does. During a year, Josh had many rebound dates and ended up with the most obnoxious wannabe influencer blogger, Janice. And after a while, he proposes to her. We hadn't met Janice yet, but we are all very happy for Josh. He showed us her photos and there was an age gap, but not inappropriately so, with him being late 30s and her being 30. She looked gorgeous and her bio info sounded like they would make a great match. Her pictures were filled with her doing fun activities and she was tall, blondish and quite pretty. But when we met Janice, that was when I learned about filters, lol. And the lengths that some people go to convey a life they don't actually live on their dating bios. Janice actually photoshopped herself into these scenic pics, bought expensive clothes to pose in, then returned them, straight up stole other people's photos, etc. Like I just said, Janice was, and still is, I just checked her Instagram this morning, a failing wannabe Instagram influencer slash model. She has fewer than 5,000 followers, and I'm pretty certain a lot of them are bots or bot followers. Her content is sad, and she comes off like a catty, vapid 14-year-old. It's pathetic. She has also created a mommy blog, and that's pretty super cringe too. I guess she's also trying to claim she's a professional photographer to boot. All I can say about that is L.O. mother effing L. Anyways, she was superficially nice and her method of making conversation was to make fun of people's cars and clothes and purses and watches, etc. And she even made fun of us for having student loan debt. The B didn't even have a degree or a job. We tried to excuse that as her being insecure in meeting new people. Regardless, we all made the effort to be kind and to get to know her, but it became clear that Janice was just not into anything but herself or talking crap about others. They met via online dating, but she insists that they tell everyone that they met through mutual friends. I don't know why this was such a thing for her. She had a total meltdown when she found out we knew the truth. Josh was always the laid back, amenable type, but with her, they always fought in front of people and in public. She picked fights over the most trivial things and it was embarrassing. I've never known a couple that fought so much in front of others. It made for very unfortunate times when we were together for events. Anyways, none of us could understand what the F Josh saw in her. We chalked it up to Magic Vagina. He said it was because he really wanted to settle down. Josh's personality slowly changed as the months went on. His work was suffering, a few of us worked together, he dropped out of all the activities he enjoyed, he started gaining a lot of weight, drinking more, took less care of his appearance and home, and just all around seemed sad. So basically, Janice moved into his house within the first month of dating and started isolating him from his friends and family. The few times she would allow him to work late or hang out with others, she always fabricated an emergency that required him to leave ASAP. He actually looked like he was on the road to call it quits with her, but one night, about a year into dating, he told us she was pregnant. We all got the feeling that she could tell he was preparing to break up with her and that's what pushed her into this Hail Mary claim that she was pregnant. We were shocked. A couple of the guys took him aside to talk to him, told him he didn't have to marry her. Josh was pretty silent and said he had to do the right thing. And so the wedding happens. Fun fact, she tried to get away with not inviting any of Josh's friends to the wedding, which explains how we were treated at the wedding. Oh, that bride sounds so obnoxious like OP says. What do you guys think of her so far? Anyways, now it's time to move on to part two. 
the wedding. We were all coming from literally all over the world for Josh's wedding. On the invites, the venue and the place where we were all booked to stay was listed as a hotel out in the middle of nowhere. Closest airport was two hours away. We all arrive at the hotel, about 150 guests, only to be surprised by shuttle buses. Turns out the hotel isn't the venue. The actual venue is a farm even farther. Further? Out in the middle of nowhere that required a 30 to 45 minute shuttle ride. Many of us said we would prefer to drive ourselves and are told we are not allowed to as the roads are too narrow and there is no parking available at the venue. We are assured that the shuttles will take us back anytime we want to leave. This turns out to be a lie. Also, the farm had ample space for parking and the roads were not narrow at all getting there. I think they just wanted to ensure attendance as the bride was Instagramming her wedding live and wanted to make sure there was always going to be a crowd for the photos. It was a record hot summer and we are left waiting outdoors for the ceremony with no refreshments and little shade for almost two hours. Finally, after enough complaining, Janice's family begrudgingly allowed caterers to serve as water, while the wedding parties and the immediate families were all in the air-conditioned farmhouse that no guests were allowed in, getting ready for the ceremony. Every so often, someone from the families or wedding party would come out with a glass of champagne or canapes to chat with us lowly guests and then skitter back off to the farmhouse when they got too hot or wanted more refreshments. It was the most BS thing I've ever experienced at a wedding. It was pretty clear that anyone outside the family or wedding party was considered second class guests. We were basically moving scenery for them. The ceremony is finally set to start. We are ushered to the seats, not enough seats for everyone, about a quarter of us guests are left standing. Luckily, the ceremony is under an hour, but we then are left to stand out in the heat again, with a very little shaded area. For a cocktail absent cocktail hour, while the wedding party and families are having photos taken. All of us are sweating our butts off in black tie wear and all the ladies makeup is melting off and our hair is all ruined. Finally, we are all allowed into the venue, which is a giant barn. It looked super weird having a string ensemble, harpist for the ceremony, singer and DJ with crystal decorations and flowers covering everything in a freaking barn. The barn is decked out like the plaza, basically. We are choked out on the overwhelming stink of lilies. The centerpieces were so large you couldn't see the people across the table. We were all seated for the meal. But just as everyone gets their meal placed in front of them, the father of the groom gets everyone's attention to give a speech and specifically asks everyone to put down our forks and stop eating. We do. The speech he gives is at least 40 minutes long. How do I know it was that long? I started timing it after it droned on for a long time already. It was the most rambling, incoherent speech that did not mention the bride or groom at all and only talked about World War II, his ancestors, Wall Street, the Jews, and other random politics. To wrap up the speech, he asked us to donate to his political party. I've been texting a friend who also attended, and he said there were actually people from that political party there trying to harangue people for donations. When he finally finished, the entire room was silent in shock. I guess no one else wanted to do speeches after that, so we all awkwardly started eating our cold meals. Janice was insistent on having her little teacup chihuahua at the wedding, a dog she begged for, yet never took care of to the point where she just openly allowed the dog to pee and crap all over inside their house because she was too lazy to walk him. It was a common complaint from Josh, especially being that she didn't work or go to school. She got the dog solely in an attempt to garner attention on her Instagram. She admitted this and isn't embarrassed by this at all. After she got the photo she wanted with the dog, she couldn't be bothered anymore with him so she tied the dog up underneath her table without food or water and forgot about him. He was discovered at the end of the evening by one of the guests. 
Janice also complained about people not dancing and got on the mic and berated those of us too tired and fed up to fill the dance floor. The bee had the audacity to complain that we didn't look picture perfect after leaving us in the heat for most of the wedding. She also complained about anyone who had visible tattoos or clothing that she didn't deem fancy enough. She also, throughout the night, yelled at groups of us to direct us where to stand so we could be a background for the photos she wanted to have taken. The mother of the bride gets absolutely est-faced. She wore what basically looked like a wedding dress to the ceremony, long mermaid cut of white lace, and then changed into a tight black rhinestone embellished mini dress for the reception. The dress was so short that even the slightest bend forward would flash her bare butt at you. I don't know if she was commando or if she was wearing a thong. It basically looked like she was wearing a too tight shirt and she forgot to put on her trousers. Didn't help that she was also about a hundred pounds overweight. The mother of the bride turns into one of those emotional crying drunks. She was all over the dance floor, cry dancing. After she threw up next to the DJ booth, the mother of the groom had to take her away to the farmhouse for a while to get her to compose herself. At this point, it's about midnight and most of the guests have had enough and wanted to get back to the hotel to shower and sleep. So a group of us go to the shuttle buses, only to be told they're only going to make one trip and that was scheduled at 2 a.m. Mind you, this wedding has been going on since 5 p.m. It was the worst wedding I've been to. There are other things that happened involving Janice and her whole awfulness. She was the one that thought it was so funny to have the beat up groom cake topper and couldn't stop pointing it out and telling everyone how true it was. It wasn't even on the groom's cake. It was on top of this gorgeous five-tiered cake that none of the guests were allowed to eat, as apparently it was just for the families. The guests were given what looked like grocery store cupcakes. Oh man, yeah, that is a horrible wedding with all the show and waiting in the heat and the drunk mom and the poor dog and all of that. Ugh, insufferable. But then again, this leads us to part number three. The Honeymoon and Decline On their tropical island honeymoon, according to Josh, she refused to do anything fun or go anywhere outside of the hotel or the beach immediately outside of the hotel. That was if he could even get her out of the room. Apparently, she didn't want to ever leave the hotel room, not even to eat. She ordered room service for all her meals. He said they basically took a 10 hour flight and spent thousands of dollars to just sit inside of a hotel room and play on their phones. She attempted to paint a different picture though on her Instagram, but failed, as she posted various photos of what little you could see of the beach from their balcony, and also the effing car park with idiotic captions of how amazing their honeymoon is. I thought she was trolling, but no, she's truly that stupid. Most of the other pics she posted were just plain dumb. One was a blurry picture of the coffee maker in their room, but she thought was artsy photography. When they returned, Josh organized a brunch to treat the friends that lived in the area as a thank you apology for attending the wedding. It obviously was not expected by us, but was a very nice thing for him to do. Janice complained about our behavior at the wedding and that our gifts sucked. She also told us that she wasn't going to do thank you cards for the gifts because we should be thanking her for inviting us. She also seemed to think that we were treating her to the brunch that Josh invited us to. So she ran up a big A tab and then got angry that Josh paid the bill. Janice then starts up this hilariously bad new wife blog and it was incredible levels of dumb. She made her entire personality about being a posh, young, new-kept wife and desperately tried to put out this image that they were wealthy. Josh did well financially, but not private jet level well. She put her parents and themselves into some crazy debt for the wedding because she is all about images. Janice once group messaged us pics of an apartment complex, not even a condo complex, on an artificial reservoir, but the text said, I bought a beach house. LMAO. Girl couldn't afford to buy a box of Tic Tacs. 
In a moment of weakness, I was a D and texted Josh and said, congrats on the new beach house. And of course, he didn't know what I was talking about. I told him about the Instagram post and he was embarrassed as F and told us she did this kind of crap all the time and he's trying to get her to stop. Speaking of lies, one of her funniest lies was about being a Rhodes Scholar, which was immediately called out as first of all, she was dumber than dog crap and she typed it as Rhodes, 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 Rods. Never once correctly spelled it. She also claimed to be an expert on economics and almost attended MIT for grad school, but she really wanted a family instead. She also told people that she almost decided to be a professional ballerina after she took one ballet class and deemed herself a ballerina. Hello. Oh, and let's not forget the most unforgivable lie. The pregnancy. Josh didn't divulge the details and none of us felt it was our place to pry, but he told us that she wasn't pregnant and that she came clean about it during the honeymoon. We assumed she miscarried, but Josh was like, nope, she lied. He said he didn't want to talk about it, but they were going to stay together and work on things. One thing he did explain was that after the breakup with the amazing girlfriend, he felt like he would never find anyone nearly as great as her, and that time was not on his side, so he felt like he had to take what he could get at his age if he were to have his dream of having a family. Sad, but this is not unheard of with many people. So, they get for real pregnant on accident, literally a month after she admitted the fake pregnancy and they had the big talk about how they needed to work on things and that this isn't the right time to have a baby and they have tons of stuff to work on etc etc. She promised that she was on birth control and that her gyno told her she was likely infertile, blah blah. Still, he was a dummy for believing her and not taking any precautions on his end. Their relationship somehow got worse during her pregnancy. She gives birth, that she livestream, then her idiot A decides that's when they'll go on a baby moon. LMFAO, isn't a baby moon supposed to happen before the baby is born? Josh is a full blown idiot and they go, and it's basically the honeymoon all over again. She refused to leave the hotel room, but the good thing to come of it? he finally even realizes that he needs to divorce her A. She, of course, desperately tries everything to manipulate him to change his mind, faked another pregnancy, got into a car wreck with the weeks old baby in the car, became an even worse hypochondriac and tried to put herself in the hospital every week, then finally ran away with the baby, but came back after one night because she couldn't hack taking care of the baby on her own. There was a terrible incident with the baby losing too much weight in her first several weeks because she was intentionally not feeding her enough, so Josh got a live-in nanny to care for the baby immediately after this. Also, there were some suspicions of factitious disorder by proxy. Basically, when he told her he was leaving her, she pulled every play from the narcissist's handbook. Her dumb A didn't realize she was digging a hole for herself when it came to custody, before all her antics, he was willing to share custody, but after all her BS, he went scorched earth. They weren't even married for a year. She dragged the divorce out for almost two. All for nothing. She just tried to make life hell for Josh with ridiculous accusations and demands. I don't know where she found the money, but she took him to court for every little fabricated infraction she dreamed up. During the proceedings, he had full primary custody and she got supervised visits. They got to a point where she got unsupervised visits, but strangely, she rarely even showed up for them. Then, she just disappeared off the face of the earth and that was how the divorce was finalized. She just failed to appear, so everything ruled in his favor. She was such a terrible person that whenever anyone behaves in an astoundingly moronic and entitled manner, my husband calls it pulling a Janice. Josh is doing much better now with his daughter. He's dated here and there, but I think he's resigned to staying single and just focusing on his kid. So that is the long-winded story of the worst wedding I've ever attended. Oh my god, Janice is such an idiot. She faked the pregnancy. And then she got in a crash with the baby inside the car? My 
god, that woman infuriating! There's so much I could say about her, but I'm not going to because the video is too long and I would need to censor most of it. But I think you guys know what I would say. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, go ahead and click like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and become a part of this community. And don't forget about my other channel, Lost Genre AITA Daily. There's a link in the description. And finally, go ahead and visit the Lost Genre subreddit where you can share your story or cross-post stories from other subs for me to feature in videos. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.